Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. I've recently been updating my various models and especially the engines including the ED4 engine which has been converted to the staged combustion ED8 engine now. And this is mainly because I want to get away from using the engines and hardware from other organizations. Uh, after all, they could invade each other or do some really ridiculous tweet. Uh, Elon, I'm looking at you. Uh, so yeah, just I want to set all that aside and rely on just purely my own stupidity rather than the stupidity of others, basically. Uh, so anyway, uh, to that end, I have decided to convert the Orion system with the Orion carrier plane and the Orion space plane to use ED-8 engines, but I don't know whether it will work. Now, on the space plane side, that's a little bit easier. Uh, we've got, we had the Prometheus vacuum engines before, and really the ED-8V is just a better replacement anyway. It's got essentially the same thrust. It's a little bit lighter weight because it's staged combustion, and because of its large nozzle, it has better ISP. So it's a pretty good uh, swap altogether. Uh, the problem lies with the carrier plane side, because the Raptor engines, unlike the Prometheus engines, were very efficient. And we had nine of those on here, and those nine, uh, each engine produces double the thrust of the ED-8 engines. And if we take a look at the stats, uh, relatively speaking, uh, the ED-8 engine, the sea level one, uh, gets 322 sea level and 338 vacuum. Now that's a really tight uh, ISP range, and that's because its nozzle ratio is only 15, uh, which is not good. In fact, if we bump that up to 24, it would make better ISP on both sea level and vacuum, believe it or not. Uh, so it's very much not optimal to have it like that. But of course, it'd be a physically larger engine, which is one of the reasons why, you know, it, it, the nozzles would start getting in the way of each other here. And so, yeah, we are keeping them like that for now because otherwise they won't fit is basically the issue. Uh, even though they're smaller right now than they used to be. But the Raptor, by comparison, 333.5 uh, sea level, 358.8 vacuum is what I have it at, at base level. But if we go to the Raptor 2 version, uh, we get, well, basically the same. It's just more thrust, really. This is not as good a swap because of the ISP issue, but that's why I've put six of the vacuum engines on top. Uh, once we get to a decent altitude, we can extend their nozzles, uh, though uh, we might want to shut off some of these engines here in particular when we do that, uh, because otherwise, I don't know, maybe, the, maybe it won't be a problem, but maybe the fact that they're producing thrust will cause problems for the nozzles there, right? So, yeah. Uh, you've got those action grouped. Uh, this bottom row is action group to 8, that row is action group to 9, this row is action group to 0 or 10, and then the top ones aren't action grouped separately, so those stay on. So we have a total down here of um, 20 engines, a 6 in the bottom row, uh, 8, and then 4 and then 2. Uh, so double what we had before, well a little bit more than double because uh, that would be only 18 if it was double. Uh, and we are going to see whether it works. The one issue is that our thrust weight ratio is not very good right now. But here in the VAB, it's not giving the right stats, I don't think. Because there's no way we only have 7,878. Even though we have low ISP on this side, we shouldn't be that low. So it's complicated with all the stuff with the extendable nozzles and that business. So we have to test it. We are launching from Brownsville and we will see how it goes. I have no idea whether this can work or not, and that is what tests are for. So here we go. One thing I do know is that it probably wouldn't work very well if we hadn't shortened the wing and taken off the jet engines off of the carrier plane. Uh, you recall that I did that in a recent video and tested that. This is the shortened wing version with the engines, jet engines removed, and that saves the mass that allows the lower ISP rap, uh, ED-8 engines to work instead of the Raptors. Uh, that and the efficiency of the engines on the upper stage now, which is slightly better than the efficiency of the Prometheus vacuum engines. So we are going to see about that. SAS on, throttle is up. 
I'll prepare Smart ASS for a heading of 75, which is to Cape Canaveral, and ignition. And launch. And roll 180, actually. Execute. All right, but yeah, a very low thrust weight ratio we can see. It really is really low, just barely above one. But our delta V has changed, so that's reading right. But yeah, it's sort of a Saturn V-S um, thrust weight ratio compared to what it was before, which was more than 1.4, thanks to the Raptors. So yes, we are trying to go in-house with uh, stuff. I mean, the space plane designs are uh, taken off of 2001 Space Odyssey, but that is a work of fiction, so. And uh, while they are operated by Pan Am, apparently, uh, there was no indication of who built them. I don't remember any indication of that. Well, we're high enough to extend the vacuum nozzles, I think. Uh, I don't know where you guys think we should shut off the center rank of engines. We don't have enough thrust right now to do that. Maybe I should wait on the vacuum nozzle extension. We might be able to do that. Definitely worthwhile though, as it's getting 360 now compared to 338 in sea level mode. The nozzles on the space plane just stay out. We don't uh, change mode on those. We don't really want to go past 4,000 meters per second, otherwise we'll overshoot Cape Canaveral and also incur too much heat. So that is a thing. I get the strange feeling Jeb, Bill, and Bob are in the carrier plane and not the space plane. That's not ideal. Well, I'll try shutting off the center rank of engines first instead of the bottom. The bottom would make sense for balance, but... That doesn't help with balance at all, yeah. We'll see. It'll help for heating. And we probably want to roll over now. Getting close to the pitch limit here, at which point we'll shut off the sea level ones. Those. And shut off. So just the vacuum ones now. Really that's as fast as we want it to go. So we're carrying more fuel than we need in the carrier plane. 4,000 was what I wanted. Let me switch off. Oh no, wrong thing. That one. Okay, well I don't want to kill too much time here. Let's verify that the space plane can do its thing. Shut down. Separate and ignition. Okay, RCS on first. All right. Um, kill rotation. Oh shoot! Uh, I thought I controlled from the right thing, but apparently not. Okay, cancel that theory. It's got enough delta v. We'll do that later. Let's do this now then. <laughs> Let's test this. That that one's messed up now. Surface one. Lots of delta v left. We need some for the RCS, but not this much. We only had the sea level raptors on here before. The vacuum, once we extend the vacuum nozzles, it's better. We'll just wait longer to extend the vacuum nozzles until we can safely turn off those engines, and that might be preferable. We can still hear the poor space plane trying to do something over there. Well, the Kerbals are in here anyway. Okay, we are coming down. Seem further away from Florida than I thought we would be. So we'll see how that shapes, shapes up for us. We're more than halfway there, but it depends on how we bounce up or not. Oh, we should take in the nozzles. Uh, one thing that this allowed for was a shortening of the body flap. Because the ED-8s are shorter. And also somewhat more tucked in. Oh, there goes the space plane.
the balance might be a little bit different because of the engine mass and the tail being different. We'll see. I mean, it's maxing out the pitch there, but it's otherwise fairly well controlled. The G-forces didn't really hit very high there. 7 Gs. But that was one thing about shortening the wing, is that shortening the wing actually reduces the G-forces. Because the large wing create more drag and more deceleration quicker. Which I thought might be necessary. It depends. Um, the bigger wing would therefore incur less heat overall, but we're not having heat problems. Let's see, what does this short wing actually allow for? Also, the reduced body flap probably gives us less, less pitch authority. If we tossed on a canard, it might be easier. Looks like about 20 degrees is really what we can get. That's a lot of ED8s, let's face it. Maybe a little bit bigger a body flap. We'll see if it blows up because the runway decides to kill it. Like it did last time, I'm not going to be happy. Oh, I should have had gimbling toggled. They're shimmying a lot. That should be less than Mach 5 now. And 30,000 meters. Uh, Smart ASS is doing a lot of shimmying, so I'm probably going to take it to Atmospheric Autopilot now. Our fly-by-wire system. And come around. Can turn RCS off too. Uh, it's going out of kilter. It's going out of kilter. Uh oh. Oh no. Oh no. Oh dear. Hmm. Well, that's a problem. This was a very reliable system before, but it looks like I overstressed the wings. So. Yeah. Okay, well, that's you. I somehow, well, we probably hit the 13.4 Gs when we were spinning around. So that might be too quick to do that. And maybe I should have used the speed brakes. Okay, well, uh, well, let's, let's revert there. Yep. Okay, lesson learned. And uh, maybe just uh, do something different. We'll make sure to bring the space plane up this time. Hopefully we can do that properly, and then we'll try for landing again. So throttle up, SAS on, and 75 degrees ignition, and launch. And that's our little roll program. I'll also wait until we're higher up when uh, I'll wait until we can shut off the middle engines before we extend the nozzles on the vacuum ones. We had plenty of delta V left after all. I just want to double check that these are running in the right mode. Yeah, 338 max right now without the nozzle extension. Okay, just double checking there. Okay, 3G's, basically one minute remaining. I'm cutting off those that center rank and extending the nozzles. And of course changing the ISP on those engines now as well. To their 371. And rolling. Okay, just in time, we want to cut off the bottom engines now. Off. Okay, no, I really don't need the Earth-centered inertial right now. Thank you. That's plenty of time to apoapsis. I'm gonna turn on RCS. I'm gonna turn on RCS up here too. Probably for the best. Oh, and let's turn off all but the top two now. Uh, 
I think that might not have been necessary. I think it was just maxing out because we were pitching down. Oh, we we're too far ECI anyway. Oops. Okay, shut down. And actually, we do want that. All right, decoupling. Uh, make sure we're controlling from here this time. All right. And ignition. Uh, okay, kill rotation. Um, I think the engines are misplaced there. Even though they're placed in the same location. <laughs> uh, it must be that we need to angle them a bit. Angle them down. This might be a problem. Oh, she sure got a lot more problems this time. Alright, we'll try the carrier plane recovery. Sure made it look easy before. It seems like we're going much further this time. And we are encountering the atmosphere here. Okay, here we go again. Coming down at one kilometer per second. It's very much... Very harsh. This will have much more G-forces associated with it than last time. We, uh... Went up higher initially, too. It would have been better if I had cut off earlier. A little bit over 10 Gs there. But again, this is not supposed to be crude. And you know, they are Kerbals. The issue with air brakes would be dynamic pressure and heat, but right now the air is too thin to cause a dynamic pressure problem. And we're not encountering heat right now either, so... Certain point where it probably wouldn't be good to use them. Especially on the initial bounds. Not thrilled with how smart ASS is trying to control this. Not too sure we can make it back this time. We've got a lot of speed here. Still around Mach 6. I'll wait till we're at Mach 3 to take over, I think. But we are getting pretty far out. Okay, let's try this. Atmospheric autopilot is enabled. And turning. Trying not to kill it this time. Not that it's easy to turn something going past Mach 2 here. I mean, that's... To be expected, we are at a 3 to 4 G-ish turn, 3 G turn. That's the uh, turn force, not the speed we're talking about there. I'm not even looking at how far out we are right now. I don't even feel like we've got a whole lot of pull-up authority. We are nowhere near the cape. It's amazing how changing the engines out has an effect like this and how refined the original design was really we could sure use the jet engines now I guess we could dump the fuel and use the engines a bit I'm gonna turn on the center rank of engines and fire them up if I can I'm trying to sell the fuel down here okay Of course, we could have just dumped the fuel before, too. Well, let's try that for now. Slow down in a hurry, though. Well, if you're wondering why I was so surprised when the previous test of this worked when I had shortened the wing and all, that all worked on the first try. Well, uh, I think we understand why now. For the space shuttle, a lot of the initial designs had this sort of deal. What would happen is the space shuttle would sit on top, have its three RS-25s or some combination, and then the carrier plane would have a lot more RS-25s with a shorter nozzle. And it's possible that the space shuttle, of course, would have to have internal fuel in that case would also have had vacuum nozzles on the RS-25s instead of the sort of mid-range nozzles that ultimately had. 
that whole idea was nixed because the space shuttle needed a certain size cargo bay. Uh, originally, it didn't need such a big cargo bay, but then they changed the requirements to sort of narrow down the thing because there were so many options that they wanted to narrow it down, so they added more requirements, and that allowed them to narrow it down. But the main requirement was that needs this big cargo bay, then you can't really do it like this. The Orion 3 space plane doesn't have that kind of cargo bay, obviously. The sheer volume of the hydrogen-oxygen mix already took too much space inside the shuttle to accommodate too big a cargo bay. A certain amount of cargo bay was fine, but not something too big. Can't even properly see where the runway is right now. Oh, this is still in the install of Principia. See? <laughs> it's, got, it's got our turn there, too. Look at that. Um, but I really don't need the lag on the map view all the time. Let's go like that. Okay. Uh, I think it might be good to give the engines a little bit more of a puff. Not too sure we're getting there right now. Keep it as low thrust as possible. Okay, changing to locked view. Turning. Oh, uh, uh, this should be off. Was it fighting me the whole time? Again, auto atmospheric autopilot is on. As my flyby wire right now. Oh, 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 oh. We're a little bit nose heavy. Uh oh. Hmm. Let's see. You can see the pitch uh, is sort of pitching up, even though, you know, shouldn't be using that much pitch authority right now. We probably have a higher landing speed than before. Uh, maybe not that high. Uh, okay, okay. Mm. Brakes. I could use the drogue chutes. And you know what? I'm gonna. Oh. Oh, okay. I guess not. I need to check the settings on those chutes. Okay, at the last minute we'll try and kill the body flap again. Nope, it's clean this time. It knows it can't get the body flap anymore. <laughs> Alright, so we landed, but not in the ideal situation because I had to reignite the engines, but it's doable anyway, so... Yeah. Um, we can refine that a little bit. Let's try and make sure that the space plane actually gets into orbit this time. Oh yeah, they're... They need to be tilted. That's why. The vacuum ones don't have as much gimbling as sea level ones. Only two degrees. The sea level ones have uh, eight degrees. Might have to increase that. But obviously these had gimbal limited for obvious reasons. Because they bump into stuff otherwise. Okay, I think it's all lined up now. Okay, this time trying to get the space plane in orbit for reals here. SAS on, throttle is up, and preparing the heading. Ignition. And launch. Wonder what happened to Jeb, Bill, and Bob. We did recover them, right? I mean, hmm. they didn't pop in here automatically, though. We might have to pay SpaceX for operations out of Boca Chica, though. But, you know, if they can lease NASA stuff, maybe we can lease some space from them. I don't know. Or we could build it next door.
just really convenient. Okay, center engine cutout and nozzle extension. I'll just keep it to ECI this time. Okay, bottom engine's out. Shut down at 4000 this time. Separation. RCS on. Get that RCS on. Zero for now. And ignition. Please work properly. <laughs> Uh, yeah, two degrees of gimbling isn't great for this, and we don't have a whole lot of time right now. Well, this might need to be tossed up a little bit more. Or we need to take less time in the transition. Uh, wobbliness is not good. Delta V-wise, we're okay. And it's not that long a stage at all. This doesn't have that much room for fuel. And basically the fuel starts here and goes all the way back. Okay, our vertical speed is picking up again. So not detrimental. Using a lot of authority in all directions though. We may just have to keep some pitch to compensate for the fact that the engines are tilted down. So... That's just how it is. This is actually flat right now, basically. Just like with the shuttle. And I'll get a high apoapsis there. Alright. So 426 by 166. We've got 640 meters per second left, which is good enough for normal low Earth orbit operations. Though, the space station, this was supposed to rendezvous with in 2001 Space Odyssey was somewhat higher. Uh, anyway, it can be done. It obviously isn't as refined as the previous version was without the ED-8s, and we're going to have to work on that. But it is here now, and I can make it work, but take some practice and maybe some tweaking, uh, especially possibly increasing the gimbal limit on these engines. Maybe, uh, well, we'll have to see. I don't know if the attitude adjustment being 8 instead of 4 or something less was a problem. But anyway, this is in orbit now and progress is being made. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.